Hello students, in this topic, we are going to discuss about immunosuppressant drugs. Immunosuppressant drugs are the drugs which suppress your immune system. When there is, why there should be the suppression of the immune system? The immune system needs to be suppressed whenever there is allograft transplantation. What is allograft transplantation? There is a transplantation of an organ from a donor to a recipient. It so happens when a organ is being transplanted from a donor to the recipient, the recipient might recognize this graft or the organ as a foreign particle and then they might try to elicit a human response and try to bring about the rejection of the graft. So there is a need that we suppress the immune system and push into a concept known as graft acceptance. It so happens whenever a body recognizes a molecule as a foreign particle, they are trying to trigger the immune response in two different ways. One is cell-mediated immunity, the other one is immoral-mediated immunity. Today, we are going to discuss about the different classes of immunosuppressant drugs and a very important type of a, uh, or the first important type of immunosuppressant drug that is known as calcineurin inhibitors, which is having a brand drug known as cyclosporin. When I speak of the classification of immunosuppressant drugs, we have around six different classifications where you have the drugs which inhibit the cytokine production. You have drugs which inhibit the cytokine gene expression. You have the immunosuppressant drugs, which are the inhibitors of purine and pyrimidine synthesis. And the fourth class are the uh, immunosuppressant drugs, which will block the T surface molecules involved in signaling immunoglobulins. And the fifth class of immunosuppressant drugs are interferons. The sixth class are thalidomides. But we are going to discuss about the first important immunosuppressant drug known as cyclosporin. What is cyclosporin? It is a drug which is usually a polypeptide in nature, which is being isolated from a fungi made up of 11 amino acids. Now, how does cyclosporin suppresses your immune system? Cyclosporin suppresses the immune system by blocking the activation of T cells. It so happens whenever there is the entry of a foreign particle into a body, cell-mediated immunity comes into picture. And in that, it so happens, one way how cell-mediated immunity comes into picture is that they bring about the proliferation of a particular group of cells known as T-cells. For the proliferation of these T-cells and the differentiation of T-cells, there is a need for the production of a glycoprotein known as interleukin. Now, this cyclosporin, what they do is that they will block the production of interleukin. When they block the production of interleukin, T cells are not differentiated, T cells are not proliferated, and thereby they cannot bring about cell mediated immunity. In other words, the immune response is stopped for the graft which is coming as a foreign molecule to a recipient. Cyclosporin, how do they inhibit the production of interleukins? Now, cyclosporin inhibit the production of interleukins by binding to a certain group of receptors known as cyclophilin or immunophilins. This cyclophilin or uh, immunophilin uh, molecules which bind with cyclosporin forms a complex and inhibits the production of calcineurin. Calcineurin is very, very important for the activation of a factor known as NFATC. What is NFATC? NFATC stands for nuclear factor of activated T cells. When this nuclear factor of activated T cells are produced, then what happens? Interleukin production taking place. When interleukin production takes place, more of T cells are proliferated, which might trigger cell-mediated immunity. But in case of the cyclosporin acting as what a uh, immunosuppressant drug. Now, cyclosporin binds to immunopho immunophilin, they form a complex, they inhibit calcineurin. When calcineurin is inhibited, NFATC remains in its inactive state. 
inactivate state means to say they will be in the NFETC will be phosphorylated. Since it is phosphorylated, they are inactive. Since they're inactive, interleukin synthesis is not happening and thereby they suppress cell mediated immunity. The next slide gives a very good picture about the functioning of a uh, immunosuppressant drug known as cyclosporin, and you also have another drug known as tacrolimus. Now, this picture speaks about the production of interleukin, and when interleukin is being produced, they proliferate more T cells, which mediate cell mediated immune response. How does it happen? This is how it goes. See what happens whenever the body is receiving a foreign particle. This foreign particle triggers your immune system and that immune system might be your T cells. There will be activation of the T cell receptors. When there is activation of T cell receptors, they try to bring about the increased concentration of Ca2 plus calcium ions. This calcium ions, what they do is that they activate a, another important type of molecule known as calcineurin. Calcineurin on getting activated, they convert the inactive form of NFATC to active form of FA, NFATC. When I say ina inactive NFATC, it is a phosphorated form. Active form of NFATC is nothing but the dephosphorylated form. So calcineurin, it dephosphorylates the NFATC and thereby now the NFATC is activated. When NFATC is activated, they enter into the nucleus of the cell. As they enter into the nucleus of the cell, they go and try to bind to the promoter regions which activate the genes responsible for interleukin synthesis. Thereby, mRNA, which codes for IL-2, is being synthesized in the protein synthesis. Then finally, interleukins are produced. The interleukins which are produced, they get released out of the cell. As they get released, they trigger more proliferation of T cells, but T cells mediate the cell-mediated immunity. This is what is happening in the case whenever the body is properly having a functioning and the body is having a good immune response. But to this type of, when we are using cyclosporin as an immunosuppressant drug, what the cyclosporin does is that cyclosporin, they go and bind to specific molecules present inside the cell and that we call them as immunophilin. Specific immunophilin, we call them as cyclophilin. So this two form a complex. When they two form a complex, they inhibit the production of calcineurin. When calcineurin is not produced, NFATC remains inactive. In other words, they do not get dephosphorylated. Since they're not getting dephosphorylated, there is no formation of the mRNA, which codes for interleukin-2. Since there is no formation of the mRNA coding for interleukin-2, then there is no interleukin protein production. Since it is not produced, there is no cell-mediated immune response. In other words, they decrease the proliferation of T cells and thereby your immune system is suppressed. So this is the way cyclosporin works in case of the graft acceptance and thereby they allow the recipient to accept the graft in a compromised way.